Huh? What I'm going to talk about tonight, um, in the right hands, is worth a hell of a lot of money. Um, and you'll know why at the end of the presentation. Um, it's the very first time I've ever put together this particular presentation. Um, and the information is uh, up to date and what I would call leading edge. I mean, not a lot of people in the world or in business know about this. So, my talk tonight is about websites. Um, and as the title says, the, I'm going to talk about the shocking truth about websites. And I'm going to expose what websites are. Now, I would say, I put a number, 90% of small businesses put a website up. And for them, it's a waste of time. The point I want to make is that if you want to have a viable business in the coming future, you must have a website. And if you have a website, you must have full creative and administration control of that particular website. I'll also add that one website for you is not enough. And you'll learn tonight about the secrets of a website and what web designers don't tell you. All right, I just search for an ordinary business. And this is traditional, this is the way that People used to do business, they still do business, and this is something, uh, it's never going to stop, but it's going to be a little bit of a dying art, a shop front. You see there's a cycling shop, and there's a dental shop above it, typical of a shopping street. Right? That's the old shop front. Now, what you see now is their new shop front. The cycling shop is underneath, and the dental shop is above. They've all got websites, so for them, they have realised that a web presence is paramount to the future of their business. What they don't know is that their websites are pretty useless. Okay, a bit of background about the internet and what it's all about. It's a fundamental part of modern society. Everyone knows the internet, we work around the internet. Uh, so this is a report uh, written about Google. Uh, it's just stressing at the importance of the internet. One of the most important things about the internet is how do you get found? So, why Google? Uh, we'll learn a bit later on. But can people find you on Google, your business? Can they find you on Google? Very important. 90% dominance by Google. And it's a worrying thing. It's worrying the government. It's worrying a lot of people because of that dominance. In Australia especially, virtually everybody, when they want to find something, use Google. Forget Bing and all the other search engines. Everyone uses Google. So, if Google can't find you, your website is useless. Okay, let's go back to the dental practice. Can we find the dentist in Guy Mead? You do a search, dentist in Guy Mead. Front page, you can see there's a listing of that particular business. Pretty good. Um, if you and Guy Mead, and if you're looking for a dentist in Gaimia. Um, this is what is called local search. Google likes to give you good results. So they know that if you type in a suburb, a name of a suburb, they will give you a result that is from that suburb. So this is what they call local search. Very important from a according to exposure, local exposure. So, can you take questions or interruptions? Interruptions, you would like this? 
Well, see, there number four there, and the first one that gets mentioned is in fact Miranda. Correct. Now, where's the logic for Google giving them the right answer? Because you asked for a dentist in Guinea, and it didn't come up until the fourth one down. There is. And I don't know where the Miranda people live, except by the second one, which says Miranda. There is a logic in there, Paul, and I'll get to that a bit later on. Now, if you are a dentist, you want more business than from Miranda, because once you've got Miranda, you want to go to Sunderland, perhaps. So, what would people search for if they were in Sunderland and they wanted a dentist? I guess a good search term is a good dentist, you know, you want to find a good dentist uh, in the Southern Shire. So, if I search for a good dentist in the Southern Shire, by me is in the Southern Shire, this is page one. I can't find that dental practice. Page two, there we are, down the bottom of page two, Gymere Dental. So, I guess page two, not bad for a local search. Now, what if you want to win wider? How about Sydney, right? Um, you might be in Sydney, you will want to find a good dentist in Sydney. Let's see what happens. I look for a good dentist in Sydney. I just keep going round and round, and up to page 24, still looking. Nothing. I can't find them. And that's the problem with most websites that small businesses have. They cannot be found by people who's looking for them. Okay, let's use computer stores as an example. This is what most, most computer stores look like. When you walk past them, you see a name saying computer store. Right? This one's got no one walking past. And a website uh, that's not built properly is just like this. There's no one walking past because people can't find them, right? So the question is, do you want uh, your website to be like this computer store? Or you know, maybe like that computer store? Uh, there's some websites are virtually like that. It's pretty crap, people don't ever find them. Or, maybe you want to be a little bit more upmarket, like Harvey Norman or something like that. And, you know, all the major computer stores have this sort of stuff, right? Computers everywhere, browsing, people come through, there's a guy here having a look. So, it's not bad to have a, have a website like this, but what sort of website ideally should you have? Anyone ever heard of Apple? Apple, right, is an experience. People go to Apple, whatever for, I don't know, right? There's something about Apple. If your website is like the Apple website, I reckon you've scored great. You've scored, right? Okay, so as a recap, this is what websites are like, right? No one can find you. It's an ordinary shop front. It's got no atmosphere, so people come in, have a look, they want to get out of here. But if you are an Apple store, you get great service, you go into the place, and you breathe in the Apple feeling, right? And the biggest thing, the most important thing, at the bottom, they spend big money. And expensive. It's right, okay? So, if you can get your website to be like the Apple website, money just rolls in. All right, just an example. It's got the most prominent position in Google. People like iPads, they search iPad. There's the iPad, right? And that's their website. And I'd say, it's an Apple website, but within the app shop, the, that particular website, there are many websites. And this particular one, it's an iPad website. Everything you want to know about iPads on that particular page. If you want an iPhone, they've got an iPhone website. If you want an iPod, they're there. If you want to buy some tunes, you've got iTunes. So, the question is, what if you don't have billions of dollars like Apple? What do you do? How, 
How do you get on the world wide web and be as good as Apple? <coughs> well, let's hope that by the end of tonight you have some idea for how to do that.